はじめまして。Welcome to my Japanese class. I'm Moyo Johnson. I have been teaching Japanese for over 30 years at various colleges. If you've been searching for a structured way to learn Japanese, that's just like a college program, you've come to the right place. And I am thrilled to meet you. This is an introduction video before we dive into a language lesson to introduce about me, about this channel, and Japanese culture and language. Let's talk about textbooks first. In this beginner's course, I will primarily base my grammar explanation on these two textbooks Genki number one. And Nakama number one. Textbooks are not required to follow my video lessons, but if you're considering getting one to enhance your learning experience, either of these options would be a great choice. I will put the information of these textbooks in the comments below for your convenience. Let's have some fun to unlock some interesting facts about Japan and Japanese language. Jumbi, okay desu ka? All right, let's go. First question Where is Japan? Of course, you know where Japan is, right? So let's find it on this globe. All right, so Japan is often referred to as the Far East. So let's find Japan on this globe by turning it towards East. Okay, so this is America. Right, this. this is America. And I'm turning towards East uh, through Africa, Europe. Okay, here it goes. East, east, east. All right, here it is. In the far east section lies the land of Japan, right here. Nihon desu. Miemasu ka? Ne. Okay. This is a big glove. Now let's look at the flat map to see Japan up close. Um, this map doesn't show all the smaller islands. By the way, there are more than 14,000 of them around Japan. Um, you can see that Japan is surrounded by the ocean. There are four main islands, Hokkaido, Honshu, the largest one, Shikoku and Kyushu. Tokyo, the capital city, is located on Honshu. This geographical location has benefits like beautiful natural scenery, tasty seafood, and various agricultural products that make Japan's cuisine special. And there are four seasons in Japan, spring, summer, fall, and winter. Each season lasts about three months. And here you are looking at the amount of Fuji in different seasons, spring, summer, fall, and winter. Each season has its own unique beauty and breathtaking sights. I hope you have the chance to visit Japan and experience the wonders of each season firsthand. Let's quickly explore Japan's history. Did you know that Japan is the oldest country in the world? Since Japan has never been conquered by another nation, it is the oldest country in the world. So, as this chart of world history timeline shows, 
There are other countries that have long history of existence, but they changed their colors as they were taken over another country. Japan has the same red color in this chart because it has always been governed by its own royal family, the Japanese emperors, from the beginning to this day. Japan's history is closely tied to mythology, much like ancient Greece and the Roman Empire. It is believed that the descendants from the myths continue to form the imperial line to this day. According to ancient legend, Japan's first emperor, Jinmu, this person, said to be directly descended from the sun goddess, Amaterasu. The line of emperors in Japan has been reigning with a shared ancestry within the same family. In other words, by tracing the family tree of the current emperor by following their father's line, we can connect the current emperor, who is the 126th in line, to the first emperor, Jinmu. The emperor is like a family father more than the ruler. There's a famous episode called Tami no Kamado during the 16th emperor Nintoku. He lived in 4th century. And one day he saw from a high vantage point that there's no smoke rising from people's hearth during the dinner time. He realized that the people are suffering from tough economy. So he decided to hold taxes for three years. When Empress expressed concern about the state of their lives, Emperor Nintok reassured her saying that the reason the gods established a monarch was for the sake of the people. Only when the people are happy can the emperor be truly content. The emperor himself stated that the emperor exists for the sake of the people and he is buried in this ancient tomb and this is the largest ancient tomb in the world. Shinto is an indigenous religion that originated in Japan that doesn't have a specific founder or religious leader. Unlike other religions, it doesn't have secret texts or set doctrines. There is no special ritual like baptism, so anyone can follow Shinto by respecting and being grateful to the gods. Shinto's main idea is that gods are in everything in the universe, especially nature. It values things like respecting ancestors and living with purity. So for Japanese people, Shinto is more like a way of thinking or life. The uh, pictures here shows Torii Gate, which is the entrance to a Shinto shrine. Notice there are no walls, symbolizing that everyone is welcome to visit and pray. So Shinto emphasizes living in harmony with nature, recognizing gods in the world around us. In Shinto, there are gods in mountains, oceans, animals, even in tiny pebbles. And yes, even within the words we speak, we say kotodama for the spirit of language, and it is that spoken words hold the power of kotodama. So when you start speaking Japanese, watch out! Japan has been open to other religions like Buddhism and these diverse beliefs have peacefully coexisted with Shinto over the years. Japan stands out as one of the few countries that has never witnessed religious wars. And here is the Japanese flag 
a simple yet powerful symbol you may have seen during the Olympic Games. It's nicknamed Hinomaru or Circle of the Sun, and you'll find it in various creative designs. Here is the uh, tasty twist Hinomaru Bento, where they use the white rice as the base and top it off with the red pickled plum. Let's talk about the Japanese language and its interesting writing systems. There are three of them. Uh, hiragana, which looks like this. And katakana and kanji. Hiragana represents all the sounds in Japanese and is primarily used to conjugate verbs and form grammar structures and particles. Uh, is for foreign words and onomatopoeia. Uh, having three sounds a bit challenging, but don't worry, as you learn these systems in this course, you will see that it's not confusing at all. Now, let me quickly show you how these three writing systems work in a sentence. Use this sentence, my name is Johnson, as an example. Hiragana, as I said, collectively represent all the sounds in Japanese, and it is primarily used to conjugate verbs and form grammar structures. When you write this sentence using only hiragana, it can be hard to distinguish the words, especially from connector words like particles. However, by incorporating katakana, which is used for foreign words, I can write the name Johnson in katakana because it's an English word. This helps the sentence become more recognizable. Now, by adding kanji, the sentence becomes easier to understand words such as I, name and katakana word Johnson stand out, making the sentence easier to read. Here's another interesting aspect of the Japanese writing system. Japanese sentences can be written in different directions, either horizontally or vertically. So for example, these two sentences convey the same message. One is written horizontally following the left to right format that we are familiar with in English, and the other is written vertically from top to bottom. Do you think horizontal and vertical writing mixed on the same page may confuse readers? Well, not really. As you become familiar with Japanese and its vocabulary, you will naturally understand whether to read vertically or horizontally. The Japanese writing system offers flexibility in how information is presented. In newspapers, this clever approach allows them to make optimal use of space. So interestingly, Japanese newspapers are really able to make the most of their page. So this writing system is very practical. Vertical writing may seem unfamiliar at first, but up until World War II, most of writing was vertical in Japan, such as traditional literature, letters, and traditional calligraphy. When reading vertically, you start from right top corner and proceeds downwards, reading from right to left. Uh, and even today, if you grab a paperback or comic book in Japan, it's likely to be written in the vertical format. Take a look at this book, which I published uh, 
long time ago. <laughs> it's written from top to bottom and we read it from right to left. You'll notice that the title on the spine is written vertically while the title on the cover is written horizontally from and then you read it from left to right. However, in technical works, textbooks, often magazines, horizontal writing is commonly used. Your Japanese textbook, for example, should also be written horizontally to accommodate both English and Japanese text. I hope this introduction video got you even more interested in Japan and its cool language. Now, please get ready and hit that subscribe button so that you won't miss our first lesson. Lastly, I'll say a quick self-introduction in Japanese. Don't worry if you don't get it now, but by the end of this course, you will understand everything I will say in Japanese. As of now, just relax and enjoy the sound of Japanese. Minasan, hajime mashite. Watashi wa Johnson Moyo desu. Nihongo no sensei desu. Minasan to issho ni nihongo o benkyo shimasu. Kono klasu wa tanoshikute omoshiroi desu yo. そして日本語はとてもきれいな言葉です。一緒に勉強しましょう。Okay, now let's get started. I'll see you all very soon. さよなら。